What's up 802 Garage? It has been another beautiful day out here in Vermont and where I'm at right now is the transmission is actually back in this red beauty if you can call it that or at least it is in place so you can see that this gap right here is almost filled up. So the plan for today is actually to put the transmission bolts in, get that thing fully tightened up, hopefully put the axles back in and get the wheels and tires back on the car. That way it can sit on its own again and then actually have the engine supported by mounts instead of a block of wood. That'd be super sweet. So I don't know why I'm going so detailed on all of this because if I didn't film every bit of it, I could get it done in one day. But I wanted to take you all along for the journey of putting this rusty beast back together. So I hope you're enjoying it. And if you are, please subscribe and like the video and comment and all that good stuff. And let's get right to it. Since I'm trying to do everything right putting this car back together, I ordered a whole new set of transmission to engine bolts and I have them labeled the way a common online diagram does, which is Q-U-V-Y. And so this one first is really important. This is the one that goes from block side to transmission side. It's the only one that goes that direction. And this is commonly referred to as the crank walk bolt. And Jaffa Mobile actually hypothesizes that this is the reason so many people think they have crank walk issues is because they don't use this bolt, just like my car, it was missing it. And over time, the transmission gets a little loose and basically pulls on the crank until it damages the thrust bearing. So this is MD706012, super important, glad I have it now. And then I ordered two of these which you need and these are supposed to be MF140266, but the forum post I referred to actually had them labeled wrong. You can buy these all as a set, so I'd recommend doing that. Uh, this was actually just a little bit cheaper, but then I screwed up. Luckily the two old bolts I have actually are the correct ones, the M10 bolts instead of M8, so I'm gonna go with those, clean them up. And then over here we have MF140471, that's the biggest bolt of the bunch. You can see my old one does not look like it was the correct bolt at all, it has a weird washer on it too. And then we have MD740892, and so this one has a little conical front end, and I think this might have been an original DSM part, but this is the updated version at least, and it looks a lot nicer, so should be all set to go. At first I thought JNZ Tuning might have sent me the wrong bolts when I ordered this, but nope, it was my bad, and that was one of my more popular unboxing videos, so I'll put a little link up here if you want to go check that out. Tons of OEM DSM parts that are getting this thing back up and running. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put these bolts in fairly tight for right now, and I'll actually torque them down once I have a motor mount in. But so the bolt order is V, U, Y, U, and then Q comes in from the other side down over there. So I'm gonna start with bolt V and these are all 14 millimeter caps. This one goes in through the dowel. That was V, this is U. And we got bolt Y, the one with a little bit of a cone on it. That goes directly below the water neck. And then we have the other bolt U. All right, seems to be going in pretty nicely. Oh, all righty, the transmission is officially in, although everything still needs to be torqued once again. So now that the transmission is firmly affixed to the engine, I should be able to jack it up and actually have the entire engine go up. Remove that block of wood. And then I can show you where bolt Q goes. All right, so I jacked up the car just a bit and I removed that milk carton which had been there way too long. And for any of you who are curious, yes, the oil pan was dented before I got there. That's exactly why I used plastic and a carpet to protect it. Added a couple jack stands just to make sure this engine won't come down on me. And I did put another tire under the car over there for safety's sake. That way it will not come down on my head. Bolt Q is a 12 millimeter and it goes right up here at about the 11 o'clock position from the axle seal on the driver's side. And it does come with these two washers, so I would recommend you use those, one flat washer and one lock washer. Finish that up with the ratcheting wrench so I can feel it. You don't want to over torque this, it doesn't take a ton. So what Jeff from Mobile said, and this makes total sense to me, is that if you forget that bolt, which basically goes right down over there from that direction into the transmission, then what happens is over time your transmission actually loosens up and is able to flex out this way a little bit. And that makes perfect sense to me because all four of these bolts 
are all on basically one half of the transmission. So even just that little bolt with that extra torque and lock washer holding it in, is gonna keep this thing from vibrating. And if you think about it, since this is all connected to the clutch and the pressure plate and everything, that little bit of flex can pull on the crank over time and that could really ruin the thrust bearings in there. And that would make you think you had crank walk when really your issue was you were missing the crank walk bolt. So that's why it's called that. Makes total sense to me. Don't forget that bolt if you have a DSM. I'm cheating a little bit right now because I already have the transmission supported by two mounts because I wanted to torque all these bolts down when the transmission was actually held in the position it would be in. I don't know how important that is, it's just how I want to do it, but I'm going to show you the torquing procedure right now just so it's at a similar point in the video to where I showed you where each bolt goes. So I'm going to take each one of these out, make sure they're clean, put a little blue Loctite on them, and the transmission bolts on this side get 35 foot-pounds of torque. All right, and I'm gonna give these a pretty good amount of Loctite because I know the holes aren't perfectly clean and I really don't want the transmission shaking loose and ruining my new clutch or causing any crank walk issues. And like I said, these get 35 foot-pounds and I'm going by Jaffro Mobile's advice. Usually I like to verify torque specs at at least more than one source, but I really couldn't find any other reputable sources for this torque spec, so 35 it is. And I'm just gonna repeat for the rest of the bolts. All right, gonna go back and double check the torque on all of these. All set, now on to the crank walk bolt. All right, so same procedure here, except this only gets 22 to 25 foot-pounds because it's only an M8 bolt and it is going into aluminum. So don't go higher than 25 foot-pounds. All set on the trans bolts. Another thing is now is a good time to check if your clutch fork actually has enough play to make sure that you can fully engage the clutch because otherwise you will need to shim that pivot ball like I showed you in previous videos. And if you do need to shim it, you basically need to take the transmission out. So you definitely want to check before you get everything fully mounted. Basically, it's recommended that the bottom of the clutch fork be on this half of the window for the clutch fork, as in on the driver's side half. So if you look at where the clutch fork goes in, the window goes from here all the way over to here. And they say that when you pull this way, when the throwout bearing is pressed up against the teeth on the pressure plate, it should be still on this half. So I'm definitely good, I'm, I'm pretty far over. You can see it has about that much play before it's actually bottomed out, but it starts engaging well before the halfway point. If it's at the half or past it, they usually say you should shim your pivot ball. Uh, the rest of the adjustment can be taken up by the slave cylinder and also by the clutch pedal adjustment in the car. So I should hopefully be good here because I start on the right half of it. Next, I gotta go find this transmission mount, which goes to the body right there, and that's in my big box of GSX things. Here we go, this box has all kinds of fun stuff. Has the driver's door handle, which I am gonna need to put in since mine is broken. This one is not body color match, which is unfortunate, but maybe I can paint it later. Upper ball joints from Rust Belt Garage. Check him out, he's got an awesome channel, Turbo Dakota. Super cool, he's got a lot of other projects too. Radiator hose, radiator hose blow off valve Ooh, which has seen better days but I can probably just clean it up a bit you get the point so I did some digging turn on the lights and I need this beast and I need this beast and I don't know if I have all the nuts for these and I would love to take the time to uh, clean these up, make them all nice and shiny black again. This one's a good candidate for powder coating, of course. But I'm not going to do that right now because I just need to get it back together and I can take off, you know, one mount at a time later and clean them up if I need to. All right, I went into the car where I have all my nuts and bolts sitting and I have passenger trans mount nuts and bolts in this nice KFC cup. So hopefully I have everything I need in there. We will see. 
a looks like stuff. So this plate has to go on first. There's two bolts that are supposed to go in, but I'm guessing this one goes in before the mount and this one goes in after. So these are the two bolt options I have. One looks like it's probably the correct bolt. This looks like a Mitsubishi bolt. And this one, since it's got two washers stacked up, is probably not the correct bolt. I don't know, I guess I'll go with this one for the underside. All right, I cleaned that bolt up real quick because it was gross. I'm gonna put some anti-seize on it so it doesn't, you know, get stuck in that aluminum. I think all these 17 millimeter bolts get torqued to 42 foot pounds. So that's what I have this set to right now. Now the actual mount itself can go on, which I may need to lower the transmission for a little bit, but we'll see. There we go. It's in place at least. Cleaned up this bolt a bit too. Also give it some anti-seize. Since it's not the right bolt, I think this is a 19. And yes, I would love to be using the correct bolt, but I didn't want to buy a whole new set of bolts for the entire car. That doesn't feel good. I feel like I'm stripping this threads. Yeah, I was definitely stripping some threads on that. So maybe it's been damaged before, or this wasn't the exact right bolt, etc. But sometime I'll have to put a thread cert in there. I'm guessing they were damaged before I got here. Or maybe this is the wrong torque spec and these don't go quite as high as these on the studs, which would make some sense. But the specs I found online all said that they were all the same. So maybe I should have done some more thorough research. I'll go to like 30 foot pounds instead for this one and just call it good. Somebody in the comments can tell me what it was actually supposed to be or if this is just another case of the previous owner screwing something up. So I only have this set to 30 now. Nope, not even gonna hold that. Nope, too stripped. So that's a bummer. Like I said, damage was probably done before I got here, but it might've been my fault. So I'll just leave that in for now. Luckily there's plenty more to hold it in place, this one and this one over here, but I will be putting in a thread cert at some point. These next nuts though, I know are supposed to go to 42 and actually some resources I found online actually said 43 to somewhere over 50, but I'm just gonna go with 42 cause that's what Jaffro says. And I did put some anti-seize on the studs and on the nuts and if anybody has any complaints about me using NTCs, well, live in Vermont for a little while and you'll understand. I do have the torque wrench set back to 42 foot pounds with a 17 millimeter socket. Here we go. I will have to jack this up a little bit to get it in position. Kind of just hope that it wants to guide itself there mostly. All right, giant screwdriver. Always a mechanic's best friend. There we go. Nice and easy. Just needed something that fit. Looks like the back side of the mount might be caught. Transmission is sitting kind of crooked. That was not quite what I wanted. There we go. Managed to push it back a little. There we go. And like I said, I do not think this is the correct bolt at all, but at least it is a bolt. Lock washer, which isn't correct, but at least it's there. And hardware store nut. Really annoys me to do this, but gotta do what you gotta do. These are supposed to be 17 millimeter. They are 19. Stay. Oh, and of course, oh, I need a deep well. Okay, you can stay there. So this is a bolt that has taken me at least five minutes when it should take 30 seconds because somebody used the wrong parts. Cool. This bolt is supposed to get 51 foot pounds and we'll see if this hardware store Chinesium bolt can take it. At least this one's replaceable and it's not part of the transmission. Oh, 
Jeez. I honestly think that might have been creating new threads on this rod because there's a partially unthreaded part. But either way, at least it's done. All right, next thing I need from my box of mini Mitsubishi things, this rear rear trans mount dealy. If you're wondering where I've been stashing all these bolts, they're all in here. And I was smart and I labeled them all when I was done. These are for the bearing carrier apparently. Those are for the transfer case. Uh, rear transmission mount through bolt, definitely need that. Again, doesn't look like the correct bolt, but at least it will work. Um, old bad gasket, shift linkage, rear transmission mount, three bolts, perfect. As always, it is getting later and darker, and I have been having to spend time finding things I shouldn't have to, so. These are the three bolts that I had for the rear transmission mount. This right here, the pitch stop mount bracket, and they go into these two holes and this one here. And Jaffro mentioned something about one being shorter. I have two shorter and one longer, but then upon comparing these more closely, this is actually a slightly skinnier bolt. It's got a different width head too. So this bolt just isn't right. It fits really loosely into the transmission where it's supposed to mount. So it's it's wrong. I don't know why it's here. It's It's not the right bolt. So that's out. Actually looks more like one that should have been for the transmission, honestly, uh, to the engine that is. And then, so I found this bolt, which is at least the right thread diameter and pitch and all that is really rusty and gross. So I cleaned it up and I did compare it to the length of these. And with the two washers, it's not much longer and definitely not much longer than this one. And this one went all the way in with the bracket without a problem, just didn't tighten right. So these three are what I'm gonna use. All right, getting rather dark, so this is probably the last thing I'll film for tonight. So, if we slip this up underneath all the wiring, there we go. I was able to rotate it in. And I'm gonna put the two prettier bolts up top. All right, and so the last bolt goes a little below that one, and I'll move it back. Apparently these are all supposed to get 51 foot-pounds as well, but it's really hard to get a torque wrench in here. Just give them a goot and tight. Alrighty, I'm gonna call that good. I'm gonna try to get this into position now to line up that bolt. All right, well, believe it or not, exactly when that jumped up is when my battery died. So I've got it pretty well aligned and I'm uh, gonna try to get the bolt in now. Now, for whatever reason, the people who worked on this car last did not like using the correct bolts because this one's supposed to have kind of a pointed tip to help you get it through this mount, but mine does not. Oh, got it. This isn't even the right size nut, but you know, ideally at some point I will replace all these Incorrect nuts and bolts. We will see what happens. All right, and so you know, this is supposed to be 32 foot pounds, but I'm just gonna use my kind of powers of guesstimation because it's not the right nut and bolt, anyways, and I don't feel like going to get my smaller torque wrench. Here we go. If anything, that's probably a tiny bit overkill, so. And there we go. The back of the transmission is actually mounted. So it is dark out and I have a big mess to clean up and I did not get as far as I wanted, mostly because of having to look up bolt sizes and find replacements, etc., and just trying to get this thing all aligned. But the good news is with those two mounts in, I should honestly be able to kind of just take this off the jack and it holds its own weight. That's pretty nifty. Next steps are going to be putting in the axles, putting in the transfer case, and then the lower subframe and the front mount. And then it's basically all set, except for of course the starter and battery and intercooler piping and fluids. And yeah, a lot of stuff, but it's almost ready to start still. We're really getting there. This feels really good. That's bright. But if this is all I put in this video, then thank you so much for watching. Uh, progress is progress. Appreciate it. If you made it all the way and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you made it all the way and you are subscribed, 
well, leave a comment and tell me you made it all the way because I always love knowing that people actually watched the whole video I put so much time into making. Thank you so much. It's getting there, and I'll catch you all soon on A2 Garage.